Big Danny Buchan, how you doing? Not bad, mate. How are you? Yeah, good. Always better seeing your face. Yeah, I would I'm just saying I've, I've missed people. Yeah. I've missed people. I mean, I miss the racing and, mm. I, you know, I miss a lot about the, the, the bikes, but I miss the people more. Yeah, I feel like I feel bit actually... Like even like driving, you start thinking to yourself. I haven't actually spoke to somebody other than like friends or family. Like, yes, yeah, it is funny, isn't it? It's, and it, it sort of like brings it into like, oh yeah, we are going to go racing eventually. Yeah, and it's exciting. Yeah, go on then. What's the yeah. exciting bit? So exciting bit for 2021. I'm with Synetic BMW. Yeah. Um, on the new M1000 RR, which is uh, exciting. And yeah, just. But again, like going back to like how I feel about it, I've not really thought about it because I haven't ridden a bike yet. So it's just... I'm what have you been doing? I've been training, been selling office furniture, being a dad. Yeah, and that's your little... That's yeah. your little and you've always done that. Yeah. yeah. Even when you yeah. could have said, no, I'm a bike racer. Mm. I'm not doing anything during the week. I'm training. I did do that for two weeks. Ah, did you? And really? I was so <laughs> bored. I literally... When, I, like two years ago? Yeah, when, uh, 2000, my, first paid, my first paid contract was 2015. Yeah. So that's my first professional year, effectively. And I literally remember, like, me and my missus got a flat. Like, we was renting a little flat and it was quite good. And I remember, like, she'd go to work at 7 o'clock in the morning till 7 o'clock at night she'd get back. And literally, I'd go to the gym at half six. And then I'd come home and I'd just be bored. I'd yeah, watch yeah, daytime yeah. shit television. Just, I was so bored. And I thought to myself, right, uh, all right, I'm being paid for this. This is fine. This is good. I'm, I'm paid and all that. Phone my mates like, what are you doing? Working. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what are you doing? Working. What are you doing? Working. And it, I just sat on my own in the flat and I thought, I can't do this. And um, I phoned my old man up and said, look, I want to come back to work because I used to be out on the tools. I said, but I can't be out on the tools because I need to train. I said, I'll come in the office. And that's when I started with um, getting involved with the family business. Yeah. And how is it, the family business? Right? It's good. Yeah. He, good. he wants to slow it down, but it keeps picking up. So oh, he's, uh, that's yeah. But he wants me to he wants me to focus on that and not race bikes. But then my career's going up, so that's all right. Yeah. Though it's nice. Yeah. Uh, one of the the big pro- not problems. One of the big issues you've got with being a professional bike racer, which you are now, you've got to do something when it finishes. With mm. a bit of luck, you earn enough money not to bother. Yeah. Uh, Foggy, for example, yeah. it can it can be Carl Foggy still and 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 have a nice house and have a nice life and and good luck to him. Yeah. However, for the for most people. No, come on, this is just your, this is just your like shopping that. money, this yeah. is, mate. <laughs> so it's nice to have something, and it's yeah. really difficult when you're retired to find something where you fit in and mm. you enjoy and you can yeah. do and you can make a bit of money out. So it's a, it's mm. a good thing, I think. Because it's a different pace of life, isn't it? You know yourself, like, how hard you train and stuff for this. Well, you're all like you was massively into it, weren't you? And then obviously, yeah. yeah, like, seeing the end of that, like, retiring, yeah, I couldn't... Well, obviously, for me, I'm 27, but actually sitting there and thinking, bloody hell... I might retire next year, or when that doubt starts to creep in, or when you think you might. You don't know yeah. what it's going to be. No, that's yeah, yeah. No, I just yeah. Obviously, you can't think of that yet because I still mm. look at Brooks, who's thirty-seven and won a British Championship. Yeah, well, one of the things I think's happened is for a couple of reasons. People are going on racing longer because they're able to. Do. I agree, you need to be fitter physically, stronger physically these days for a superbike because they've got more power. These things are brutal, you know. Yeah. When I ride a, the biggest powered bike I rode around, let's say Cadwell, yeah. a demanding circuit physically. The biggest power bike I've ever ridden around there in anger mm. is probably 160 bay horsepower. Super sport bikes are yeah. 160 horsepower. Now you, you're dealing yeah. with you know, 2, 2, 10, 2, 15 horsepower. Yeah. And that takes physically more effort. However, you still need to be fit. Mm. So if you can be fit physically and keep the training going until you're 40 now, it's definitely doable, which yeah. in my day, you tended to get hurt a little bit more. You tended to have more knocks, more yeah, dings, bells. the circuits were a little bit yeah. more dangerous. So you yeah. do, you, you're kind of over it by the time you're 35. It was yeah. unusual to see a 40-year-old racing. Now it's quite regular. Yeah, it is, yeah. yeah. But you're, but when you was racing as well, how heavy were the bikes compared to now? Like, we were 168 kilos, weren't we? Yeah, I was were generally about the same. Were they really? Yeah, yeah okay. about, they built They look massive, didn't they? Uh, yeah, but I'm going to tell you this, yeah. and you won't believe it, right? Uh, super bikes has all, have always been... Uh, around about 165, 162 and a half one yeah. year, uh, but it's always been around yeah. 160 plus kilos with less power. But Grand Prix bikes, you won't believe this. Uh, in 1999, I rode a three cylinder Medinas for Kenny Roberts, and it only had 160 horsepower because it was only three cylinder. The big bikes had probably best part of 200, let's say Mick Doohan's bike yeah. or, or Kenny Roberts Jr.'s bike that year. Mm. But they weighed 135 kilos. But because mine was three-cylinder, less power, but it weighed 115 kilos. It's like yeah, a toy. It's, that's mad, isn't it? Yeah. It's dangerous. That is, yeah, yeah, I bet it was. Yeah, that, I was talking to you earlier about that, one not I? The old yeah. uh, 
yeah, the old days. You'd I, have loved it. Yeah. You would have honestly have loved it. Mm. You, you'd have, to be honest, you'd a big lad. I know, mate. You yeah. would have been a big lad for 500. You oh, ask, yeah. I mean, I know you're, okay. you're good friends with Terry Reimer. Yeah. And he's a similar stature to yeah. a big, tall lad. Yeah. And he really struggled. One thing that held him back in the 500s, because he had a good go on him, yeah. was the fact that he, he just couldn't twist. He said he had to have offset handlebars forward. Like yeah. he said, he had to have the seat union. Everything's yeah. wrong, wrong yeah. because you, you, you're yeah. so tall. The, the guys were little, like my son. Jockeys. Yeah. Um, when you're hoping to get on the bike, I mean, I know people got to speak. You, you're one of the main Spanish testing sort of protagonists. You always go out yeah. there and spend a bit of time there. Yeah, and obviously at the minute, I've just not got out there. With COVID and Brexit, it's obviously proving a little bit harder to come back. So I'm probably going to try and get out there. Um, the, the team have given me a practice bike to ride. Uh, just to sort of familiarise myself with the bike, really, and it's until I ride it, I don't really know what I've got to change if I've got to change anything. Yeah. I've not obviously switched manufacturer for a long time, so I'm quite open-minded about it. But um, I'm hoping, yeah, to sort of get out of there next month and just do a few days, even if I've got a quarantine when I get back or, or isolate, whatever. It's um, you need to get on the bike. I just need to get on the bike, really, because actually last year before the season, I said I remember saying to my old man, I'm going to try and not do any te pre-season testing with like privately. I'm just going to rock up to the BSB test and see how I get on. And I honestly am never going to do that. I'm never going to do that again. I, for the first day, if you saw my braking trace on the data, I was on, off, on, off. Like, I just could not. My brain couldn't calculate the speed, yeah. like slowing down, the braking markers. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, and I got to the Haref, the, the last test, and I felt so shit still. I was like, and I, I remember leaving the test saying to my team, I feel in a bad place right now. Like, I actually struggled. I, I didn't go too bad time-wise. But it was hard. Yeah. And I said, I'm struggling here. Yeah, because like, every other year you've spent. Oh, normally I'll go out. I do like, yeah, like I do like 20 days or whatever before the season, before I even get to the test, the BSB test, and I hit the yeah. ground running with them, and, and then I'm really good. I feel good. But yeah, so I literally come home, got, I had a practice bike built at home, and uh, literally went out and was doing all these test days in the UK, just riding tech track days. And I got to the, the BSB test in the UK, and I was fine. I was back, back to normal, really. But. Yeah, it was. Um, I'm never going to do that again. So I am sort of looking now at trying to trying to get um, get some days. But I'm supposed to be moving house. That was ah, supposed okay. to happen last week. So I don't know how the missus would find out if I told her I'm uh, in Spain while she's moving. Well, tell her, look, tell her she can put everything where she wants. Yeah. Paint it whatever colour she wants. <laughs> she does it anyway. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, yeah, I figured yeah. she would. Yeah. Yeah. Um, last couple of years in BSB, you've been, I would say, steadily getting better. And every yeah. year we say. Dan is a, a championship threat. Yeah. Do you feel like, I mean, I know you're on a new bike, you've yeah. got to get to grips with that, but do you feel that that's where you are now? We really feel that you're talented enough to do it. Yeah, I feel I feel like I'm sort of there now, you know. I feel like I'm, I, I would like to consider myself a top six rider. I mean, yeah. I've not sort of, I've, where I want to be is like your Brooksy. Like, you know Brooksy's going to be top three. Somewhere you know he's going to be fighting yeah, for the yeah. championship. Like, I want to have that sort of... Um, that consistency sort of, yeah, and, consistency. And last year I didn't have it. You know, there was there was a few things that that didn't go to plan, and there was a few things internally that weren't happening for me. And um, and yeah, it was hard. And and that last year was a was a bad was a bad year for me. Like I started off not too bad, and I ended not too bad. But that bit in between was was not good. And I I don't want that again. You know, I want to be back in the top six. And um, you know, an achievable goal for me really should be top six. My first year with with BMW. And then hopefully build on that, obviously, like uh, the year after, if we have a good year. And Did it get a little bit more difficult when you started winning rounds? Because you're round no, winner. No, it doesn't bother me. You no, know, like right. when you sort of grow up, like in the motocross or whatever we do, like we obviously, we're there to win. And at Cadwell Park in 2019, after I, after I won race one, I remember riding around in race two thinking, this pace has been upped a little bit here. I've got to be a bit sensible now because I, I'm, in the, I'm in the window for the showdown. So I can bin it and... We'll try Not, and win it and yeah. bin it, or I just need. So I just remember riding around there thinking, third's fine, just take the points." A bit sensible but, for a young fellow. I know exactly, yeah. <laughs> but that, but apart from that, I've never really. I've just. I want to just, yeah. Obviously, for that year, it was like it was championship. Just be consistent, um, and then yeah, last year just didn't go to plan. So, I kind of put that to bed now. Just focusing on the future, and fingers crossed we can have a good year. Where do you think you've got to be in a few years? It, it, you all start off with dreams. I mean, yeah. you were a, you were a. a competitive rider on motocross before you got to road racing yeah. so you understand kind of how the job works where can you see yourself what have you got the same dreams that you set off with you want to be world champ or where do you want to end up what what's the yeah that i think as you get older that sort of changes a little bit i don't know i mean I, I, obviously i'd love to be world champion and but 
you know yourself like how this how this game works is not even about talent it's not even about if your face fits it's about being in the right place at the right time sometimes yeah yeah like i think like a lot of it don't get me wrong like with scott you'll probably see scott back on a gp bike in a couple of years because he's going to do well in world super bikes and he sort of had to come back and he go through if, the hard if he way. Does, that'll be a really weird kind of circle. And he's still trying to career, do it. I, yeah. think, I still yeah. think 28 is a good yeah. 28. Yeah, 28. Year. He's just been 28, I think. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So that'll be a real kind really, of Because he's MotoGP, back to BSB, yeah, yeah, win yeah, that, yeah. win World Super Bikes eventually, maybe. And then, yeah. which ain't going to be easy for him because he's got to beat You've Johnny. But for me, yeah, I mean, I like to see myself, I'd like to do a couple of good years in. Like now I'm in with BMW, there's more of a clear path for me yeah, yeah. because obviously the factory connection with um, World Superbike. With World Superbike. Yeah. So I'd love to be able to have a very strong year with them, very strong couple of years maybe, and then yeah, get myself into World Superbikes and and um, and do that. But as long as long as I'm being paid and as long as I'm enjoying it still, I'm I'm happy with that. You know, that's and win or lose, I I enjoy racing and and that's yeah, and that's kind of where I'm at these days really. I just enjoy going racing. I enjoy the job I I do. I enjoy putting the effort behind the scenes, like the training and the eating and stuff like that. So, um, so yeah, just got to see how we get on. I had Gaz Johnson sat there and I asked him, Gaz Johnson, I don't know whether you, Gaz Johnson, the, the road yeah. racer, the pure roads man, I don't know if you know that he, he was a really quite a talented uh, motocrosser, off-roader before yeah. he started road racing. Okay. And I asked him who were your heroes when you were a kid. Because I was always, I, my dad yeah. took me to see Isle of Man, Mallory. I was into road racing yeah. from being a kid and never into off-road. And he said that he didn't really have any road race heroes. All his heroes were motocross, yeah. Ricky Johnson and Osho yeah. O'Mara and all <laughs> yeah. them sort of people. Yeah. Are you the same as that? Were your heroes as a kid yeah. off-roaders? Yeah, obviously, yeah. Like Ricky Carmichael, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Jeremy McGrath. Yeah. I remember I'd done a Supercross when I was like seven or six or seven. And Jeremy McGrath was uh, racing there. Um, I think it might have even been NBC. Did he meet him? And it was with, uh, I don't think I did actually. Because you'll be him just Mike cocky Brown. enough to go and meet him. Oh, yeah, you? yeah. It's him and Mike Brown, it was. Yeah. Like, come over to have like this American battle. Yeah, it's good. I met Shaky. Uh, Shaky, I remember, but he signed my plaster in like 2004 or something. What, you done? Well, you know, when it. I broke, yeah. So if I, if I was injured, it always worked out the same way. So if, it was, if I was injured, Brands that should be on. And that was when I, well, I don't know when you'd be able to tell me, but it was Frankie Keeley's last race. I was there, I went to that one, saw that one. Right. And that would have been, that was, a, I think it was the last time he was doing Brands Hatch. So I don't know what year that would have been. 2004 would it have been? Yeah, after the turn of the century. Yeah, Mate, honestly, there were so many people there. Like, yeah. I, I just, yeah. Oh, man, and there used to be 100,000 people. At Mate, Brands mental. Yeah, yeah, honestly, yeah. mental. Yeah. And I remember going there and thinking, wow, like, I never ever looked at him for I want to I want a road race I want to I just literally had a, a lot of injuries with motocross and it got to the point where you you was winning but then you'd have a bad crash and be out for a few weeks or a couple of months and I said to, like I don't want to do this anymore. At what age? I was like eleven or twelve. <laughs> I know and honestly I was just smashing myself up and I just yeah. and I was I was getting up my joints were all gone and like cause I was riding every night on my track at home and yeah it was just I couldn't sort of do that intensity and. Um, my dad said, oh, yeah, I know they've, 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 these little metric kit things, they ride around go-karts. We'll have a look into that. And then he was like, I don't really like that. It's not really safe. Like, the, the tracks don't look safe. And then we sort of got into the conversation of the Aprilia Super Team Challenge. Yeah. And then he went and got me an Aprilia. And uh, we went to Lid Go-Kart Circuit. I know, he Lid. thought that's yeah, where yeah. you ride. He's like, yeah, this would be all right to ride around there. On a one, two, five. Like, it was the most <laughs> ridiculous thing ever. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, well, actually, the first time I ever rode a, a tarmac bike was uh, the Ron Hasen Race School. Oh, done him? Yeah. 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 And I turned up late. The levers didn't fit. They, I bust as if I opened the levers. I was a little fat kid when I was younger. Yeah. And yeah, we run into the briefing late. Like anything to do with my old man, we're late. And um, I literally 65 mile an hour on the 125. And I just had the biggest smile. And I was like, yeah, I'll do this. And did you know straight away? Yeah, I loved it. Oh, mate, I loved it. Yeah. And I was like, this is what I'm doing. And um, and then, yeah, just sort of went, went and went with the Aprilias. Went to Spain. Went for our annual motocross trip down to Spain. And um, Dad said, we'll chuck the Aprilia in and just go and ride a couple of days, do some Yeah, do and there's some, some really good little circuits yeah. out there. Turn up to Cartagena. It was a Paul's track day on, and he goes, uh, all right, mate, how much how much to ride? Like, I to the guy, and he said, pardon? He said, how much is it for the day then? He went, what do you mean? He said, boy's got Aprilia in the back there. Started getting his money out. He's going, how much do I need to pay? And he says, no, 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 it don't work like that. This is a track day. And he said, what do you mean it don't work like that? He's like, no, nah, this is a, a day for cars. He was like, it's a bit shit, isn't it? All right, whatever. Put the bike back in, went went to another track all right mate how much to ride for the day like four it's just like motocross yeah, just yeah, turn yeah, up and yeah, pay yeah and then he didn't understand it and then literally in the end it got the i think 
about three, four months later, he hired Al Maria. Oh, did he? Hired Al Maria. And there were seven of us there. He, he, I think he was about 20 grand out of pocket after. Hickey was there. First time I met Hickey. A few of them lads, yeah. And I just, I just loved it, yeah. I loved it all. And just just did what I did in motocross. Just started and at the back and just gradually got better. And who do you see, British Championship-wise, who do you see as your main rivals? Who, who are you? The of, usuals. Yeah. Bridewell, I don't know what Bridewell's going to do because he did what I did last year. He had a good year the year before. Yeah. Was obviously thought to be a championship contender and, and wasn't. And that was me last year, the same. So I think, obviously, Tommy, you can, I don't think you can discount him. I think he's going to be there. On his days quick, isn't he? Yeah, I think, um, obviously, Josh is going to be exactly, very hard yeah. to Exactly, yeah. I mean, he's, he's kind of benchmark for Christian, me. Christian, gonna... very good year yeah, last yeah, year. Yeah, a good year last very year. Very good year last year. Didn't make many mistakes. O'Halloran's riding a wave of confidence from last season. Yeah. Taron. Um, obviously, there's quite a few switching teams, so I don't know. It's, it's going to be really, it's going to be really open. But again, I always sort of approach the season open-minded. Don't know what, what anyone's going to do. You know, I might be on this bike and clean up. I might be on this bike and struggle. Who knows? And you, have you got that feeling yet that if you go and you do your job properly and you train hard enough and the bike works well enough, you're kind of all right anyway? Oh yeah, I know I'll be there. Yeah. Yeah. I have that sort of in the back of my head. I know I can make it work. You know, I know yeah. that as long as we, as a team, work together well, and and as long as we're listening to each other and, and doing what we need to do the bike and with the bike obviously it will sort itself out and and we can be there you know like physically i'm always prepared i take my training in that quite serious so um yeah i just got to leave it all to a bit of bit of lady luck sometimes isn't it and just turn up and race last question and it's a, a hypothetical one right mm. so you can have any grid you want, you can be on any circuit you want, yeah. any bike you want, and you can have retired or yeah. current riders around you. Who would you be? Who would you be sat on a grid with, and what bike? Who would I be sat on a grid with? Well, I would love to say it's really, really hard to be honest with you because I've always been into MotoGP. So obviously, like the five hundreds we were speak, speaking about earlier, like I'd love to have a go on one of them. Yeah, yeah, mega. Thing. A five hundred, I'd, I'd love to have a go on. Yeah, so V four five hundred probably wouldn't like to have a go on it once I've ridden it though. Yeah, you would. You'd, scared you'd, shit you'd, out it's fine. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, yeah. So I'd like that. Yeah, I'd like that. I would obviously have. I'd have. I'd have. Um, doing there definitely. Mm. Yeah, doing yeah. there definitely. I'd definitely have like Marquez or someone like that. As yeah, well. like a current. Someone. I'd love to have Jake there so I can smash him up. <laughs> do him. Uh, probably a couple from your area, really. Like, I mean, you was obviously fierce, fierce competitor. Foggy, yeah, I'd go, just I'd smash go. Foggy up. I definitely. Yeah. I would definitely go foggy. Would you put just, yourself on a better bike just to beat him, though? Yes, you, yeah. that's what I'm just going to say. I'd just, just give myself better tyres and bike than him, right? So I could just, just beat just him. Just play out of his pressure. Otherwise, he'd probably yeah. have the edge, right? So I'd have foggy, yeah. so smash him up, right? Yeah, like yeah. you would be your best mate, Jay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I'd definitely have Kevin Schwantz. Yeah, that is. Yeah. flipping awesome mm. and passionate. Yeah. Rode with his heart, do you know mm. what I mean? Didn't yeah. never have the best bike, yeah. but always flipping yeah. 110%, man. I'd definitely have Dewan, because what he managed to do in the sport is unbelievable. Yeah. I'd have uh, Mike Aylwood, but you'd have to give Mike Aylwood a little bit of dispensation because he wouldn't have to get on yeah. a 500 thing. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, he never had more yeah. than flipping, I guess, under brake horsepower. Yeah. So I'd have him. Kenny Roberts, just because, no matter what happened, right, exactly. he would drink two bottles of red wine to himself that night after he'd race and be the life and soul of the party. So that'd be my kind yeah. of, my front row there. I'll tell you what, though, a little bit of a wild card is Spees. Yeah, and yeah. Who was the geezer? Who, Matt Maladin as well. He was good in his day, weren't Maladin he? Maladin was good. You must be, be honest with you. You're not having a big after party with them boys. No, you're not. No. Is that what no, you're thinking yeah, about? Your folks at the party, are you? Yeah. No, you're yeah. all right. No, you're I'm good. Sure, you're good. I'm yeah, sure yeah. yeah you you'd probably just slip. Um, you'd probably probably slip Bayliss in there. The reason you'd do that is because you would see a 55 year old man go a serious. When he made his comeback at 52, right, we were down there in uh, Phillip Island yeah. doing a commentary job for Eurosport. Yeah. And he's doing Aussie Championship, right? And I went to see him in the paddock and I thought we we're going to see my old mate having a laugh, having a little yeah. little bit of a goat racing again just for fun. Uh-uh. Fully, this fully. man is into it. He's flipping, trained out, that. he's, he's sweating, up, yeah. he's flipping. Didn't even want to speak to me. It, I mean, he knew who it was, yeah. and he was pre friendly because no, I got a race, mate. You know, he, yeah. he was proper. Wow, yeah, I went, whoa, 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 whoa. yeah, all right. Sorry, mate. Yeah, crack yeah. on. Yeah. yeah, yeah, mega. So you put him in there just for the yeah, kind of, yeah. yeah, and it does like a beer at night. Yeah, just for a crack. I like the way you focus on more of the party than the actual racing. You know? Yeah, <laughs> I, I didn't do that. I was more about the racing. I ain't yeah. gonna bounce if I go uh, down. Yeah. <laughs> Danny, cheers, man. Yeah. Good luck. Cheers, mate. Thank you.